This question says, use the vertical line test to determine whether the graph represents a function. So we're given this picture of a graph. That graph will be a relation, but we want to know if that graph is a function. So we use the vertical line test to, to determine this. In the vertical line test, we're drawing vertical lines all over the graph. And as we draw the vertical lines, we're counting how many times that vertical line crosses the graph. So for this vertical line, we have one time where the vertical line crosses the graph. Here, one time. On this one, it crosses in three places. Here it crosses in three places. Here it crosses in one place. And here it crosses in one place. And what we want for something to be a function, for something to be a function, we want to have exactly one y value. That's the definition of a function that every x has exactly one y. So when we have these situations where the vertical line will cross the graph in more than one, so we're say one because we're looking for exactly one. So we have these places where the graph where the vertical line crosses the graph in more than one place, these are places where the graph is violating the definition of a function, where you have one x value with more than one y value. So since we have a couple places where vertical lines cross in more than one place, this is not a function. The next example says, use the graph of y equals f of x to answer the following question. What is the y-intercept of f? What are the x-intercepts of f? So I want to make sure we know what a y-intercept is. A y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So let's go look at this picture. Our y-axis is this vertical axis. And I notice that the graph crosses through the y-axis at this location right here. And if we read that location, it's 0, 0. So we have a y-intercept of 0. Then we want to answer the other part, which is what are the x-intercepts? An x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So the x-axis is this horizontal axis here. And I notice that the graph, if I follow the graph, it crosses that x-axis here at negative 3.4. The graph then crosses the x-axis again here at 0, 0. And it crosses again at 9, 0. And if we continue on, even though we have this dot here, this dot is drawn as open, so that's not part of the graph. So we do have three y, sorry, three x-intercepts of negative 3.4, 0, and 9. Negative 3.4, 0, and 9 would be those x-intercepts. This question says, find the x-intercepts and y-intercept of the function. I like to find the y-intercepts first. They're usually a little bit easier. So to find a y-intercept, we're going to let um, x equal 0. So essentially, we're calculating f of 0. So everywhere I see an x, I'll change it to a 0. That's 3 times 0 minus 21. 3 times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 21 is negative 21. 
So the y-intercept for this function is the ordered pair 0, negative 21. Then we want to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0. And in our function notation, f of x is what represents y. So we're letting f of x equal 0. That would give us 0 equals 3x minus 21. And we'll solve that equation by adding 21 to both sides. That gives me 21 equals 3x. I'm going to solve for x by dividing by 3. That gives me x equals 7. And my x-intercept is the ordered pair 7, 0. This question says, find the x-intercepts and the y-intercept of the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. So I'll find the y-intercept first. To find a y-intercept, you let x equal 0. So we're substituting a 0 into our function, finding f of 0. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to change that to a 0. So that gives me 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 8. 0 squared is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0 minus 8 is negative 8. So we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 8. Then I'll find the x-intercept. To find an x-intercept, I let y equal 0. Our function is written in function notation, and the y is f of x. So I'll be setting f of x equals 0 to find the x-intercept. That would give me 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. This is a quadratic equation, and I'll solve it by factoring, although there are other methods for solving quadratic equations. So to factor the values, here and here need to multiply to be x squared, so I'll use x and x. And the values that we put here and here need to multiply to be negative 8. So my factors of negative 8 are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4, and I want to make sure to choose the right pair so I can get a 2 in the middle. So I'll use 2 and 4 with a plus and a minus, a plus on the 4 and the minus on the 2. And then it's always a good idea to double check that you factored it right. So if I multiply this out, I would get x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 8. And that's x squared plus 2x minus 8. So we have factored this correctly. Once you know you factored it correctly, then you're going to use the zero product property. And the zero product property says you're going to set each one of these factors equal to zero and solve. That will give me x equal 2 and x equal negative 4. And these are the values of my x-intercepts. 2, 0, negative 4, 0. In this question, we want to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts of the function. I like to start with y-intercepts because they're always a little bit easier. And when you're finding a y-intercept, a y-intercept is where the graph either crosses or touches the y-axis. And because it's on the y-axis, that means that the x-coordinate will be 0. So the way that we find y-intercepts is by letting x be 0. So I want to substitute a 0 into the function. And that's going to give me, excuse me, 0 cubed minus 0 squared minus 7 times 0 plus 7 over 0 squared plus 10. 
I substitute a 0 in for x, and I'm going to simplify. And 0 cubed is 0. 0 squared is 0. 7 times 0 is 0. And 0 squared is 0. So we end up having 7 over 10 when we add all those up. So we have a y-intercept of 0 and 7 tenths. So then I want to find the x-intercept. Like I said, this is usually a little bit harder. An x-intercept is where the graph either crosses or touches the x-axis. And because it crosses or touches the x-axis, the y-coordinate will be 0. Our equation here is written in function notation. And it is f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 7x plus 7 over x squared plus 10. And because it's in function notation, this f of x is representing y. So we're going to be setting f of x equals 0. And that would give us the equation 0 equals x cubed minus x squared minus 7x plus 7 over x squared plus 10. And we want to solve this equation. When we first look at it, it looks pretty messy um, because of the fraction. Um, there's a method for getting rid of the fractions called clearing fractions. And what we do is we multiply by the denominator on the left and the right of the equation. Whatever you do to one side, you have to also do to the other. And that is going to cancel out the denominator on one side. And on the other side, because we have a 0, 0 times x squared plus 10 is 0. So um, the fraction goes away, and we have 0 equals x cubed minus x squared minus 7x plus 7. And we have this polynomial equation that we're going to solve. So uh, the technique that I'm going to use to solve this equation is called grouping. Um, I'm going to use factoring and grouping. So I'm going to group these two terms together and group these two terms together. And we're going to factor out the greatest common factor from each group. The greatest common factor of x cubed minus x squared is x squared. If I factor that out, I'm left with x minus 1. And for the other group, I want to factor out the greatest common factor. We've got negative 7x plus 7. They have a common factor of 7. And I also want to include this negative sign. I want to carry that down and make this a minus 7 for what we factor out. If I factor out that negative 7, I'm going to be left with x minus 1. And if this grouping method is going to work properly, you need what's in these parentheses to match each other. And if they match each other, you can now consider that to be the greatest common factor of this term and this term. You now have two terms, and they have this common x minus 1. I'm going to factor that common factor out, and what's left is this coefficient and this coefficient. So we have x squared minus 7. So now I have it factored. It's 0 equals x minus 1 times x squared minus 7. And you set each factor equal to 0. And on this factor, x minus 1 equals 0, we would add 1 to both sides and get x equals 1. In this other one, we have x squared minus 7. I would add 7 to both sides. That gives me x squared equals 7. And I'll continue solving. Um, by square rooting both sides. 
And when you square root a square, they cancel each other out and you get plus and minus on the other side. And so we have positive square root of 7 and negative square root of 7. So we have x equals 1 square root of 7, negative square root of 7 as our x-intercepts. If we write those in as ordered pairs, that would be 1 comma 0, square root of 7 comma 0, and negative square root of 7 comma 0. Those are our x-intercepts. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.